Hi and welcome to another BrettWeiss.com Excel screencast. Today's screencast is on dynamic Excel. We're going to create a dynamic range, a dynamic chart, and a dynamic statistic. Making Excel dynamic can increase your reporting capabilities, it can increase your analysis capabilities, and it can automate Excel and can make it much more efficient. So let's get started with the dynamic range. What is a dynamic range? A dynamic range is a named range that adjusts when data is entered into cells below. So say we have a we have a, a data series here. We have month and sales as the column headers. So we have all the months going down in column A and the, sa the total sales in that month going down in column B. And what we'd like is to name is to define a range that automatically updates to include all our data points as we enter them. And to do that we're going to use two formulas. The first formula is the count A formula. This formula we can see the in, we can see the syntax down here accepts a range as its argument and counts the number of data points in that range. So as you can see here I have a count A formula um, data sheet data B3 to B5000. So what it's doing is it's starting at B3, looking at the cells all the way down to B5000 and counting the data points. And since I have nothing underneath here in column B, all it's doing is counting the data points I currently have right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It gives me that number. If I enter another data point, it'll go up to 9. We'll just erase that. The dynamic range wraps this count a formula in an offset formula to, to create a constantly updating range as data is entered. So let's create a dynamic range for our sales data. To do that I'm going to use the hotkey alt ind to bring up the name manager box. Alt ind and we're going to create a new range. We're going to call it sales. The scope of the, the, scope of the range is the workbook, that's fine. And now here's where we're going to enter our offset formula and make this thing dynamic. So we'll enter offset data exclamation point B2. Now what's this do what what this offset formula is doing is we're starting at the cell B2. So we're starting right here with the sales. And the syntax is right below if you want to look at it. Now we specify where we want to offset to. So the number of rows we want to offset to is one. We want to go down one row. We want to go left or right zero columns. We want to stay in this column. Now we use the count of formula. This is the part of the syntax you can see right down here it says height. So this is the height of the range we want to select. And the height of the range is the number of data points in the range. And this is what's going to create a dynamic range. So we're going to go count A, data, exclamation point, B3 to B. This is up to you. What you want to do is allow for data entry in, in subsequent rows so it can remain dynamic. If we enter something in this formula after B5000, the count of formula won't pick it up and we'll have incorrect data. So I've left lots of room. I've left down to B5000. We're never going to use 5,000 rows because that'd be 5,000 months and that's not realistic. One thing we have to watch out for, we can't have a different data series that's unrelated to this one underneath in any of those rows up to B5000 because then the counter function is going to count those data points and throw our formula off. B5000, lock that in place, close the brackets, we've entered our formula. Now to make sure it works we'll go back up to the range name box, type in sales, we can see that our data is highlighted. If we enter another number, come back up here, sales, the new data is selected. We've created our dynamic range. Next we're going to use this dynamic range to create a dynamic statistic. And what we're going to do this time is instead of the count A formula, we're going to use the rows formula and insert our dynamic range into that formula so it's always counting the number of rows in our data set. We're going to wrap those rows in two offset functions and wrap that in an average function or any other statistical function to create a dynamic statistic. For instance, say we're trying to create a sales forecast for the current month. Say we've determined that the previous six month average is a sufficient forecast for this month's sales. What we want to do is create a dynamic average that will always calculate the last six months worth of sales 
and plug it in as the forecasted number for the current month. So first of all, let's just take a look at the rows formula. If I type in equals rows sales here, it's going to it's going to calculate the number of rows that are in my dynamic range sales. In this case, eight. If I add another one, you can see it automatically updates to nine. And just delete that. Next, we're going to create the average statistic. Now this average statistic is a little bit involved, but basically what we're doing is instead of specifying a static range, say A2 to A14, we're going to create a variable using offset formulas. We're going to create a variable using rows formulas wrapped in offset formulas separated by a colon to simulate a range of numbers. And we're going to do that in a way that it's always calculating the last six rows of the data set. So we want the average of the last six sales periods, and we're going to do that using this average function. And I'll let you explore that. You can play around with it. You can play around with the offset formula just to see how I'm getting that. We're just going to plug it in right now. And we get our number. We're going to convert that to currency. And this is the average of the last six months sales. So if we select the last six months as a range, one, two, three, four, five, six, we can come down to the status bar and see what our average is. And we can confirm that the average of the last six numbers of our data set is 75,833, exactly the number we got there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this dynamic statistic in a dashboard report. I've got just the start of a dashboard report. We're going to place that First, we're going to place that in this cell, which I've named current month forecast. You can see up here in the name box. I'm going to place the formula F2 home. Place that in here and format this. And where I'm going to use this current month forecast is in this dashboard re report I've started. So now I'll never have to touch this formula again. This formula is always going to display the current month and whatever the current month's forecast is going to be. So say it's the end of September, we know what September's actual sales came in. They came at say 92,000. First we see our dynamic statistic updated. And now this current month, instead of, I've got the equals today formula in there because it currently is September. Say I want it to be October, I'll type in 1, 10, 11. I have it formatted so only the month shows. Now it's October. I go back to my dashboard and now we have October sales forecast and we have the updated forecast based on September's and the following or in the previous six months worth of data which is exactly what we want. Now to finish this, the start of this dashboard off, we're going to throw in a dynamic chart that can chart our monthly data that we've just made dynamic. So to do that we're going to go to insert, we're going to just insert a, a plain column chart, you can format it, move it over here. We can go up to select data. To select the data, first of all, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the data worksheet. I'm going to select all the data I currently have. I'm going to click OK. What that's going to do is it's going to create the chart. I'll get rid of this series. It's going to create the chart, but notice it's not dynamic right now. If we click on the data points, you notice that the data is locked in place. B3 to B11, A3 to A11. If I add another row of data, this chart's not going to update. But all I have to do to make it dynamic, click on one of the bars, go up to the formula bar, and all I have to do is replace the static address with our dynamic address. So I'm going to replace B3 to B11 with our dynamic sales range. So I type in sales, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I've already created a dynamic range of the months called month. I'm just going to put that in. You'll notice what I do when I what happens when I press enter. The whole formula changes to include the entire workbook and now you'll see that our chart is in fact dynamic. So if we go back to data, say we have another month, say now we, we know October's data, we can type it in, say it was 70,000. We go back to the dashboard, now all of a sudden October is fully updated right away. This would now be 1, 11, 11. So now we'd be November. Back to the dashboard. We have November sales forecast. We have the updated statistic. 
and we have the updated chart. So we've created a fully dynamic process. Now all we have to do, instead of changing the chart, instead of changing our average formula, instead of doing all that, all we have to do now is simply enter the data and everything will update dynamically. I want to thank you for watching this screencast on brettweiss.com. If you want to download the completed workbook of this lesson, click the link under the video with the workbook that says completed. I want to thank you again and have a good day.